Bueno, uh... Good morning, everybody. I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to explain our standpoint. And I'd rather get straight down to it because the moderators have already threatened to advise me when I get to eight minutes of my ten minutes. Secondary waste. Secondary waste, according to the legislation, the European legislation, the, the classification of activities classifies as the waste that's generated in the, in the activization of recovery of waste. If the waste that comes after recovery is cannot, nothing more can be recovered from it. This means that historically we had used a direct concept which was the operation that gave a market value of the, of the waste. This has changed over time, and we need to bear this in mind, because there's direct recovery if we want to get money from it, or if we get a waste that's been treated and we can sell it. This direct, um, what we get can be a a market price or the quasi market pr uh, price, which is like Coembes, that needs requires a subsidy for part of the operators get from the packagings from the plants, because with the the management and operating costs, this do not cover this sorting or this separation. This morning, the speaker that was talking about the situation in Germany talked about this, that the prices are highly volatile. So the direct, what we get in exchange for this would be the concept of the classic market value. But there are other indirect forms that we can get this that have to be born in. The indirect ones, some of them would be the environmental force because we're reducing greenhouse gases. And this is something that we can quantify in a policy that will take the form of taxes on CO2 emissions. And as the more you can reduce CO2 re um, emissions, then you're getting money from this. There are other indirect forms of rewards. So for instance, if the landfill rate or the disposal rate is uh, reduced so people don't want to pay the cost of the landfill. This is an indirect way of recovering something from the West. Then finally, there's another social recovery that we're seeing approaching. And this is when we're told that part of the uh, waste stream has to be prepared for reuse. In this case, the, in the European approach is to foster jobs and reindustrialization because Europe is losing its industry at a, a pace. So all of these are indirect value that we get. It might sound a bit ethereal to you, but we'll have a look at this. Like There's one that's already working, and that is biostabilizers from biological and mechanical planters. And this already forms part of this concept that we, you don't necessarily have to get money from the market in order to recover something from it. So let's see if we can compensate that. We have primary, domestic waste primary production in spin. We have the organic fraction that we saw before, which is very similar. He based his on the statistics of the ministry, what I'll show you later. I've taken from Eurostar statistics, there are minor differences, but basically it's the same. So we're going all right because all the figures match. Generation, we're talking about 22 million tons a year in Spain. We're cycling with selective collections, 18.2%. We can see the different fractions of packaging, the green spots, the DSRs. 18.2, all the rest of it, which is 17.9 million tons a year, which is 81.8%, is the, the reject fraction. And much of this, a significant amount of this, is 11.8, is pre-treated, where the effort has made over the last 20 years. So a lot of the reject fraction is already pre-treated, that there was recommended by the European Union. We have well over a million that go into the 10 incinerators that have been mentioned. But this leaves us 
because not everybody, not everything can go through direct pretreatment treatment. There is still stuff that goes directly to the landfill. So this is the, the primary origin of our waste, and this generates secondary waste. Here, what I've tried to do is to quantify the secondary waste in Spain. There's part from the selective collection that, ge that generates waste. There's also a part here in green. This is not waste. This is a biostabilized because we're recovering this. And we were talking about what we talk about when we're talking about recovering this. The previous speaker directly critiqued the current state of waste here in Spain management in Spain, in the mechanical treatment plants, their operating efficiency is relatively low. I've been quite generous here, but I've told, given them almost 50 percent. So this gives us another six and a half million tons of secondary waste that comes from pretreatment. And right in the end, we end up we have five million tons in direct landfill, and then from the reject fraction, all the pretreatments and the recovery operations, we have six, another 6.5 million, which is even more that directly goes into the landfill, or more or less the same, because data are never entirely um, reliable. So what happens to this? The final conclusion is that after spending a massive sum of money on TMB plants, with, with, which are not very efficient, we're not putting five million tons, but rather six and a half from the secondary waste. This means that our landfill rate is 52.5 percent, i.e. over 50 percent of our municipal waste still goes into the landfill. This is secondary waste because this is the, what we still need to tackle. And it's important to focus. We have 6.5 tons of secondary waste, and we need to do something with it. We've talked about Spain. Let's go into Europe and see where we sit in Europe. Here we have the recycling ranking in Europe. This is led by uh, Germany with over 65 percent of recycling which is the world record. Then there are a few countries that are in the leading group. And then here's Spain has a 27% of recycling. So some of you might say that in the previous slide, you'd given it 18%. But 18% plus the percentage of the biostabilized, which is recovered, gives a, pushes up the rankings to 27%. So there's immaterial recovery that doesn't measure at market prices, but does help us because this is material that does not pollute and it's classed or can be classed if it's properly managed as technical covering. It can be used in gardening and some farming uses as well. And all of this shows us that recovery can be done in many different ways. What I would like to emphasize here are two things. First of all, there's a ceiling f above which it's more and more difficult to recycle. Germany's made the enormous effort, and they're top of the, the league table, but they're still only 70 percent. The European average, which I'd also like to emphasize, is 34 percent. As we've reached 27 percent, this is a little bit like when you go to school. It's great to be the, the library mouse who's top of the class, but, but if you're below the average and you're in the and you're in the, the, at the back, then people start concentrating on you, and you can't go unnoticed. We should be around the average. The average is 34 percent, and we've reached 27 percent. This means that we're behind the rest. My personal opinion is that I think we should be like France and Italy. I never know we're going to hit the, the numbers of Germany, but at least we can catch up with Germany, with France and Italy. But there's a way to go yet. Next thing, landfill, this 52 percent. The average is 45. This is the other way around. The, the bright guys are at the top. And the worse are ones starting with Romania, Cyprus, Malta. We're above that. 
So that's a poor situation. So there's a lot more we can do to improve. This graph summarizes everything that I've said. At the top is very significant. This is the latest Eurostar survey that was done that's been published recently. And it takes this whole period from 1995 right the way through to 2014. So we're talking about a 20-year cycle. And in this cycle, we can see there's a fairly stable generation in the EU. It grew a little bit, just over 500 million tonnes a year. Then it's dropped off again. It's around 460, 480 million tonnes a year. But based on this data, we can see the controlled deposit, the final landfill in 1995, it was over 50 percent. It was 60 odd percent. 300 million tonnes went straight into landfill. And you can see how this falls continuously. There are no peaks. There are no major interruptions. It's just that Europe as a whole has taken a position to drive down landfills. So we're now around halfway. It's just over 100 and something million tons a year. It's taken us 20 years to reduce the landfill waste by half. The reason for this is because incineration has increased. I can see that that time is running. We have to do something, as we've seen. We need to increase our efficiency in recycling. There are several different models, and I'll close with this. I've taken examples from countries with zero waste. There are countries in Europe that have reached zero waste. What has Germany done? It's very easy. In this area in red, this is recycling. They've recycled an awful lot. Incineration has increased slightly. And then organic treatment, composting, anaerobic digestion have remained fairly constant. So the industrial effort in Germany to recycling, they've got far more industry than we have. So it's fine as a model, but it'd be very difficult to copy here in Spain. Another example could be Denmark, which is just a with Sweden, it's just as high as Germany, but it doesn't have the industry industry that Germany has. Denmark, what they've done, sorry, they've opted for incineration. They've recovered energy. They've recovered a lot of energy, but they also have zero waste. And the third example, this I'm delighted to have chosen this, where it coincides with the presenter the presentation that we saw of the organic fracture yesterday. The keynote speech speaker was from Austria. And what they've done is opted, they have opted for composting and anaerobic di digestion. And the reason for this is the model that each changes, you, you, you have to go to it's a la carte. I'm interested in where I live. You're here in Tenerife at, at a crossroads. There isn't one size fits all. We have a mix. You've got a salad, a first, an entree, a main course, and a dessert. So you choose. You don't want to eat too much pasta at the, at the, as an entree because you won't get through your meal. And I will close by saying that I hope you pick the right and a balanced mix. Thank you very much.